Good morning. We're here today to announce three separate cases highlighting the ongoing threat posed by Chinese economic espionage and research theft in the United States. First, the arrest today of a Harvard University professor for lying about his participation in a Chinese foreign recruitment program. Second, this morning we have unsealed a separate indictment of a Chinese national working as a scientific researcher at Boston University who failed to mention on her visa application that she is also a lieutenant with the People's Liberation Army. Finally, this office has indicted another Chinese national for trying to smuggle vials of biological material out of the United States to China and lying about it to federal investigators. That defendant, whose entry to the United States had been sponsored by Harvard University, was a cancer researcher at a lab at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. So, this morning, the FBI arrested Dr. Charles Lieber, the chair of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Harvard University, for making false statements regarding his involvement in China's Thousand Talents Plan and his affiliation with the Wuhan University of Technology. The complaint alleges that Dr. Lieber signed a contract with the Chinese University in Wuhan and was paid up to $50,000 per month, plus up to $158,000 in living expenses, and awarded more than $1.5 million to uh, set up a research lab at the Chinese school and work there on researching nanotechnology. Lieber also joined China's Thousand Talents Plan, according to the complaint, a Chinese government-run program designed to entice scientists and researchers in the United States to share their research expertise with China. At the same time, Dr. Lieber was receiving U.S. grant funds from the Department of Defense and the National Institutes of Health. National Institutes of Health spends up to $39 million a year funding medical research in the United States. Those programs required Dr. Lieber to disclose if he was working with, including receiving funding from, any foreign power. When questioned, Lieber hid his involvement with the Chinese entities, including specifically disavowing any connection to China's Thousand Talents plan. Meanwhile, based on the complaint, it appears that China paid Lieber hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years for his involvement with the Chinese entities and for his work on research for Chinese gain. Also today, a federal grand jury indicted Yen Ching Ye, a Chinese national with lying on her J-1 visa application, making false statements to Customs and Border Protection, conspiracy, and being an unregistered agent of the People's Republic of China. According to court documents, Ye is a lieutenant in the People's Liberation Army, but she concealed her military connections while employed as a researcher at Boston University's Department of Physics, Chemistry, and Biomedical Engineering Center for Polymer Studies. The indictment alleges that a colonel in the People's Liberation Army and other military officers from the Chinese National University of Defense Technology gave Ye numerous assignments while she was in the United States, such as conducting research, assessing U.S. military websites, and sending documents and information back to China. In April 2019, Ye was questioned by customs officers at Logan Airport on her way to China. According to the indictment, she lied about her involvement with Chinese military projects, a border search of her electronic devices showed that Ye had compiled information for the People's Liberation Army about two U.S. residents with expertise in robotics and computer science. Lastly, last week this office indicted Zheng Zhaozhong, a Chinese national sponsored by Harvard University who was doing cancer research at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Zheng was charged with attempting to smuggle to Beijing vials of biological material, along with other research materials that he had stolen from the lab at the Beth Israel, where Zhang was working on cancer cell research. Before he boarded his flight, customs officers discovered 21 vials of biological material in a sock in his baggage. When confronted by the officers, Zheng initially lied and said he was not traveling with any biological or research materials. Chemistry, nanotechnology, polymer studies, Robotics, computer science, biomedical research. This is not an accident or a coincidence. This is a small sample of China's ongoing campaign to siphon off 
American Technology and Know-How for Chinese Gain. Recently, Attorney General Barr referred to China as this country's primary rival. Similarly, FBI Director Chris Wray recently told Congress that right now there is no country that poses a greater counterintelligence threat to the United States than China. To the use of not only traditional intelligence officers, but academics, researchers, its own private citizens, China is engaged in a massive, long-term campaign to steal U.S. research and technology for its own uses. As demonstrated by these cases, on the academic side, the Chinese government uses partnerships and exchanges with U.S. schools and research institutions to access cutting-edge research and equipment. Obviously, most visiting Chinese academics and researchers are here to work in good faith in U.S. institutions, but some of them are not. Some number have been incentivized by the Chinese government, either through the use of money or other means, to gather U.S. research and smuggle it back to China. Because of the sheer scope of this threat, a year ago the Attorney General created the China Initiative at the U.S. Department of Justice, designed to prioritize and aggressively prosecute Chinese economic espionage and theft of intellectual property. The cases we are announcing today are part of that effort. Boston is an especially attractive target for this kind of exploitation, and universities and research institutions and tech companies in this area must become sensitized to this threat. Our community benefits greatly from the diversity and talent of international visitors and our partnerships with foreign institutions, especially research institutions. But Chinese economic espionage and theft is a real and daily occurrence that we must begin to confront. As the world struggles to contain the new virus, a new speculation from the Chinese scientists who believe it may have originated at a research facility not far from the Wuhan fish market. While they say more research needs to be done to find solid proof, such labs are known to contain disease-ridden animals, including hundreds of bats. Our Kim Hyo-san with the details. Amid the continued spread of the COVID-19 virus, there's rising speculation the virus could have originated from a government laboratory in Wuhan rather than the widely held belief that it emerged from the city's Huanan seafood markets. Citing a report published by Chinese scientists, a Chinese-language newspaper published in Hong Kong, Ming Pao, and the British daily The Mirror explained Sunday that the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, or WHCDC, could have spawned the contagion in Hubei province. According to the report penned by Bo Tao Xiao and Lei Xiao of the South China University of Technology, the research lab, which is only 280 meters away from the Huanan Seafood Market, kept disease-ridden animals, including more than 600 bats. It's stated that while it's plausible the virus was leaked from the lab and contaminated initial patients in this epidemic, more solid evidence is required through future study. The report also raised the possibility that the Wuhan Institute of Virology could have leaked the virus while it was carrying out tests involving Chinese horseshoe bats. Against such a backdrop, an article published by the Washington Times late last month is garnering attention as it raised the possibility that the disastrous outbreak could be the accidental result of biological weapons research. This comes as a renowned law professor at Tsinghua University in Beijing, Xu Jiangren, is known to be missing after publicly condemning Chinese President Xi Jinping for failing to contain the spread of the virus at an early stage. He even added the condemnation could be the last message of his life. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News.